Here with me right now, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, welcome. Hi, Trish. Hello. You know, uh, we're watching all these pictures that are coming into us right now from Venezuela, and uh, it, yeah. it's clearly a very fluid situation, as you know. But uh, what, sir, is your latest information? Well, it's uh, a little bit more of yesterday. Yesterday was rough, and probably uh -huh. tomorrow is going to be very bad. And uh, it's a terrible thing. People are starving. People are, are dying. There's no food. There's no water. Uh, it's just a terrible situation. You see what's going on. And we're doing everything we can do, short of, you know, the ultimate. Uh, there are people that would like to do, have us do the ultimate, but we are, uh, we are, we have a lot of options open. But when mm -hmm. we look at what's going on there, it's uh, it's an incredible mess. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Um, I, I know you've said this before, and you say that all options are on the table. I know there was a big NSC meeting today, and you get all your top people trying to go through various scenarios, trying to figure out what to do next. Uh, really, what are our options right now, Mr. President? Well, some of them I don't even like to mention to you because they're pretty tough. But, uh, you know, we see what's uh, what's happening with respect to the hunger. You don't see things like this anymore. And they don't want food. Uh, Maduro won't accept food. I think he should, frankly. I think it would be better for him if he did because you have people that are starving and they become desperate and you, you see what's happening on the streets. And the streets are very dangerous and it's very dangerous for I mean, frankly, everybody, everybody. And, and uh, mm -hmm. we haven't seen a scene like this in many, many years. And when you think how wealthy this country was, Trish, this country was one of the wealthy countries, not just there, but this was one of the wealthy countries of the world. And now you look at what's going on where they don't even have food, where they can't get water. The water is filthy dirty. And uh, people are yeah. getting sick. It's a terrible, terrible thing. No, it's a, it, look, it's a tragedy, and it's a, a tragedy that's so close to home, uh, less than, right. you know, four hours from Miami. Uh, what do you think about Nicolas Maduro? Well, he's uh, certainly run it tough, but I think he's losing a lot of control. He really did uh, go out and do things that are bad. It's an extension of his is uh, of, of previous, and previous was bad. It was unacceptable. I mean, it was horrible and unacceptable. It's really a failure of socialism. And I don't know, maybe this is beyond socialism, but this is socialism, and uh, you see what happens. Now they're talking about it for our country. I can't believe it's real, uh, you know, when you hear some of the things being said. But they're talking about socialism for our country. That's not going to happen, especially with how well we're doing. But... Uh, and Maduro is uh, he's a tough player, and it's awfully tough to play close though when nobody has food. And, uh, and he's still there. He's still, and he's still there. there. No, he's I mean, despite there. the fact that they have no food, they have no water, and they're marching in the streets. Uh, Secretary Pompeo told me, sir, yesterday that it, it, Maduro was ready to leave. He was, like, you know, packed up, ready to go on the tarmac, but the Russians stopped him. What does that say? What are the Russians doing down there, and, and how does that change things for us or escalate, if you would, unfortunately, well, it's not things acceptable. for us? If that's the case, it's not acceptable. You hear a lot of different rumors. You hear rumors that he was. You hear rumors that he was leaving a different way. I'm hearing rumors mm -hmm. about Russia, and I'm hearing a lot about Cuba, and we'll do a very, very strong embargo and sanction on Cuba. It depends on what's going to happen. They have a very, they have a lot at stake too, because it's not like they're exactly Boomtown, Boomtown. Uh, I used to say Boomtown USA, but they're awfully close know, to that's the not USA. Gonna work. <laughs> and somehow I'm thinking to myself, I better not say that. But it's they're not, a, they're not, they're not a Boomtown. That's for sure. They're not doing well. And and uh, with the right moves, Cuba could do very well. You know, we could open it up, but we're going to end up closing it up if they don't get out of Venezuela. So we're trying to help people. We want to deliver food and medical. There's no medical. You have children that are unbelievably sick. There's no medical. They have doctors without medicine. And it's a, you know, it's great people. The Venezuelan people, I know a lot of people from Venezuela. They're incredible mm -hmm. people. They work so hard and, and uh, it just went, boy, they had the wrong, the wrong form of government. They had the wrong two people. 
And uh, Maduro has just been not doing the job. Not no, no, the job. ain't that the truth? I remember uh, back before Chavez when Venezuela had a much right. more prosperous uh, future ahead of itself, and, and now you look at the last 20 years and how that is disintegrated. Let me ask you uh, about Juan Guaido, who's actually coming up a little bit later on the show tonight, uh, Mr. President. He will be here, and uh, you know, look, you mentioned the Venezuelan people and how much you like them. This is a gentleman who's clearly very, very brave uh, and is a walking target, frankly, because Nicolas Maduro right. doesn't like anybody who uh, is a threat to him. So what happens if they do something, if they were to jail or they were to execute, God forbid, Juan Guaido, the man we recognize as the president of that nation? Well, I hope it doesn't happen. I've been watching him on the streets and uh, right on the streets where people are being killed, and he's out there doing rallies. He's actually very brave in a, in a true sense. But I've been watching him and watching the moves, and, uh, you know, I've, uh, I, I, he's, there's a lot of spirit for him. And it is, from a constitutional standpoint, it's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, he was elected. Uh, they, they should be running it. Now, at least we could go in and help them a little bit with, uh, and maybe a lot, depending on what. I mean, the advantage they have is they have oil. It's mortgaged out to the hilt between uh, China and Russia and all the money that's been poured in there over the years. They just, they just sucked money out of everybody in order to get, you know, it's just, it's a terrible situation. It's like an incredible thing because they have mortgaged their oil almost to the maximum, but we'll see what happens there. You know, you wonder what happens to—that's called uh, Fort Lozierville, USA, I guess. But China's in— <laughs> Except not Russia's USA, in, but China's there, they, Russia's there, uh, no, no, when, and Cuba's when you think well. about it, When you think about it, though, what, what they have—what uh, has to be done, do you, you really do. Essentially, it's called a country foreclosure. The place is so bad— and so dangerous, and all the wealth, but the wealth is all mortgaged out. But so something's going to have to be done, even there, even there, because the amount of money that's yeah. loaned for that oil, you know, the the loans for that oil, they don't give them any breathing room. So it's not what people think. Okay, it's so you bring up something like though that that you know your critics are going to say. By the way, they're already saying this. I mean, so you have the the Ilhan Omars of the world right now that are saying, "Oh, this is just about oil." The only reason the United States of America cares about Venezuela is because they have such a massive oil supply. What do you say to that? Well, it's wrong, and it's what it is, is it's a humanitarian thing. When you look at what's happening, uh, we would really like to see a successful country. We liked it the way it was uh, before this group got in there, before the— and the predecessor, I guess they say, was worse. I'm not sure. I think maybe— Maduro was, Chavez worse. was pretty bad. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Started, it's, you know, you can flip a coin. <laughs> he started. I was asking somebody the other day with a great knowledge of Venezuela who was worse. And frankly, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, Chavez started the process, and and now it's uh, and now it's really been just wiped out. Sure. The whole thing is wiped yeah, no, out. No, people have no rights uh, for sure. So, and, and don't forget, I mean, they had I high knew, oil prices back then. Right, and I knew Venezuela. I understood what Venezuela. And a lot of great Venezuelan people, Venezuelan people living in Miami, and uh, this should not be happening. So we'll see what happens. I yeah, think let me let me things, let me ask you. A lot of things will be, a lot of things will be going on over the next week, and maybe sooner okay. than that. We'll see what happens. All right, Liz, you mentioned Cuba in there, which brings me um, amazingly to infrastructure because I remember the vice president telling me way back in October that he had some concerns about Venezuela and Cuba actually funding some of these caravan groups that are coming up to yep. our border. Uh, so that brings us back to a, a subject very near and dear to your heart, which is yep. the wall. I know that you met with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer recently, uh, and there's talk of a $2 trillion infrastructure uh, plan, which is just enormous. Is any of that money, Mr. President, for the wall? Well, we're not going to need it because we have it from other sources. We're building the wall. And by next year, the end of next year, we will have probably around 400 miles of wall up. We're building a lot of it now. We've given out a lot of contracts. We have a lot of contracts that have been let, and uh, we're building a lot of wall. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it's a massive area that we have, what we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, we're 400 miles is not going to do it. 
No, but well, it's going to do a big. It's going to do a lot of it because we're adding that onto some of the things that we've already renovated, and you know we've actually done a lot of work, and we're doing it. it would have been a lot easier if we had the the money. You know, uh, originally people were talking about twenty twenty five billion. You don't have to spend that much. It's not nearly that much. We've cut it down. I've actually gotten a better wall for much less money, and we're getting great speed out of it too. But we have it from different sources and different parts of government, including the military. The Army Corps of Engineers has done a really good job. And uh, okay, it, I just I want to be clear. So you're telling way, me this wall is afraid. happening? It's happening. Aside from the two trillion dollars in infrastructure, none of that money would go to the wall. But you're going to get the money from other well, sources to make sure yeah, it goes up. Built. It's being built right now. I mean, as we speak, it's being mm -hmm. built. And a lot of okay. it. So, and again, if if mm -hmm. I if somebody would have said you can have 400 miles, you know what 400 miles is? 400 miles, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. And we'll have that done by the end of the year, next year. Okay. And uh, right. it, and we're trying to pick. You know, we're building it in big sections, and we're trying to pick the sections that, not necessarily the best for construction, but the best for keeping the people out and keeping the drugs out. And you know, it's it's so bad. Let, the let me ask you bad. something. I know. Let me let me ask you something because you know I think uh, conservatives and, and certainly you, sir, ha have gotten painted as being mean for wanting this wall and wanting this barrier. Um, but you've also said, look, you know, I want to roll out the red carpet for the right kind of people. We need to be bringing yeah. people here legally the right way. That's How would true. you do that? And do you think, I mean, I mean, could you be the guy actually that gets immigration reform, which I have I always thought so. is a very bipartisan issue, right. really and truly through? I hope so. And we're going to be submitting something over the next two weeks where we have a merit-based system. We need people. Look, I have companies coming back into the United States like you wouldn't believe. You've reported it. I mean, uh, Toyota's coming in with $14 billion, and many of the car companies are going into Michigan and going into all of the different Ohio and Pennsylvania, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. They're coming into all of these states, and they're coming in tremendously. I mean, it's going to be it's incredible what's happening. We need people, to be honest. We have sure. we have a lot of, you know, we have a very low unemployment rate. We have the lowest rate we've had in 51 years. We're going to soon set mm -hmm. the record. And all of that's good, but we do have to be able to, uh, you know, power up these, these companies that are coming in. They're not going to be able to come in if they're not going to be able to get people. So a lot yeah. of that's happening. No, look, economic uh, the, growth is going to open that opportunity. Well, look at what happened. We just did 3.2. And frankly, if we would have had the Obama interest rates, you know, uh, they kept them very low, which is not necessarily good. But if we would have had those low interest rates, we could have been much higher than that. But 3.2 is a number that they haven't hit in 14 hey. years. 3.2, I'll give you that. It's pretty darn good. You've got very low unemployment, best numbers, certainly within minority communities yep. and, and, and women as well. So that's all a, a lot to be proud of. Um, let me turn to the news today. My goodness, I, did you see this? I'm sure you did. You must have caught parts of it. Uh, Attorney General Barr there uh, with his testimony. Yep. I, Fox has learned that Attorney Barr is not actually going to go to the House Judiciary Committee tomorrow. How come? Well, I guess they want to treat him differently than they have anybody else. And uh, for many, many years, they've never done it this way, where they're bringing in outside counsel or something. And that's not the way. You know, you elect people, they're supposed to be able to do their own talking. But he did a fantastic job today, I'm told. I got to see some of it. He did a fantastic job. And it's all a big hoax, this whole thing with Russia. It turned out there is no collusion. There is no obstruction. You covered it better than, frankly, almost anybody, if not anybody. But there was the whole thing is it's just a terrible uh, blot on our country and, and what it represents. But there was never obstruction. There was never collusion. You look at it, it's all just it, it's a political game. Now, I'll tell you, on the other side, there's plenty to be talking about. Uh, they covered, I heard, very much with the Strzok and Page and the insurance policy and all of the things that happened that are so terrible, so disgusting, frankly. Uh, Comey. Mm -hmm. And you look at all the Democrats, they all wanted to fire Comey until I fired him. You know, uh, Schumer, every one of them, they, I would say practically every one of them, they wanted him out. And then as soon as I, uh, as soon as he's gone, they're all uh, holier than thou. Oh, that's such a terrible <laughs> thing to do. Look, 
It's well, all politics. politics. Uh, it's, it's terrible. It's politics, yeah. It's terrible. But I, he look, did a and I would just the AG today. I would say to you, and thank you for the compliments. What I would say to you on that is, um, and I think you you know me well enough by now. I want right. what's right, what's fair, and in, I've called you out, and I'll and I'll continue calling you out if if there's something I don't think is right. But listen, right. this is. I read the entire report. I spent Easter weekend, Mr. President, All reading right. every single page of that thing, and I that came away saying, exciting. well, there was volume. Uh, yeah, my my family really yeah. appreciated it, but uh, yeah. you know, volume one uh, left me saying, what the heck did we? We do, and then volume two just had me saying, "Well, goodness, for goodness' sakes, why is there a volume two when you discovered in volume one that you never had a problem?" So right. you've now got a, Attorney General Barr being subjected to the politics of the moment. What do you think ultimately happens? Is this going to go into 2020? Well, I think people are tired of it. The big thing was collusion, because you know collusion is a whole different ball game. And as you say, when there's no uh, conspiracies, there's no crime, there's no anything. In fact, I guess they they said the campaign repulsed efforts to come in. But you know, when you I look know, at the other I read side, that and I saw that they yeah. couldn't get close to you guys. Volume you know, one, they read it. To. <laughs> they tried to, yeah. and they probably tried for her campaign too. And if you look at yeah. Obama, President Obama in September. He learned a lot about things. He didn't do anything, and nobody likes to talk about it. It's a very one-sided deal, but mm -hmm. I think it's turning very quickly. And a lot of things are coming out, Trish, that nobody thought would be possible. If you wrote this as a novel, it couldn't sell because it wouldn't be believable. Um, yeah, we might be looking at a volume three, I suppose. Let me ask you about all these calls for Attorney General Barr to resign. Uh, you know, I see that, and I, you know, again, you mentioned the politics of the moment, um, but resignation now for the attorney general, that's what the Democrats want? What's your reaction? Well, I haven't even heard that. I mean, it's so ridiculous. He's an outstanding man. He's an outstanding legal mind, and, and I heard he was really, he performed incredibly well today. Mm -hmm. And for, for well, the country, he the, performed you know, well. Kamal Harris. Mm -hmm. Well, she was I, probably very nasty. <laughs> How about these three people? Three yeah, of them are yeah. running for... Three of them, they're not doing very well, but three of them are running for mm -hmm. a particular office. I think I maybe uh, you're talking to the person right now. They're running. So you have three of them running against me, and they're up there ranting and raving like lunatics, frankly. Mm -hmm. And they're running. And how is that fair? So you have Bill Barr, highly respected, great attorney general, and he's got to take the abuse from people that are running for office. They don't care about this. They're just looking for political <laughs> points. And I really think that the American people see through it so easily, Trish. I mean, it's so so easy to see through. Well, but I, I think they do. I think Americans, you know what? They want to know that they have a job and that their neighbors have jobs and that they're, they're going to have some kind of job in the future. I mean, it, that's why it does come down to the economy. So when we look at 2020, right now you get 3.2 percent growth. You've got right. low unemployment. Does that stay? And if it does, in that kind of environment, who do you want to run against? Well, I don't want to say necessarily. <laughs> I'm not sure I care. But it looks like Bernie really? is Really? Because I saw the tweet storm on Biden no, this morning. It made me wonder if, uh, you know, he's— <laughs> He is a sleepy guy. Uh, I don't care. No, it just seemed to be what happened is, you know, the firemen love Trump. The policemen love Trump. The military, they—I mean, the relationship we have, look what we've done for the military, $716 billion. It was really depleted and troubled. So, you know, these people love— and then. The, into the fireman or the international comes out, and they always do. They have for many, many years, but they go with the Democrat, with Joe. And the mm -hmm. firemen and women, they went crazy when they saw it. They went absolutely crazy, because they're going to be voting for me. They're all going to be voting for me. I had it the last time. The heads of the unions voted for Hillary, or as we say affectionately, mm -hmm. crooked Hillary, which turns out to be so true. But the heads of the unions went that way, and the people went my way. So that's Would it happen. have been a harder race had you bigger. run against Biden? No, I mean, I, I, look, no, they, they picked Hillary, who was obviously a, a, a tough bet, as it all turned out. I think, I think Biden would be easier from the standpoint that you will have so much dissension in the party, because you're gonna, it, it'll make four years ago look like baby stuff. Because, you know, they're, they're looking to see what they want to do, is they want to see if we— if, you know, they want to get in. They want the radical left. Mm -hmm. They want the left movement. And 
he probably isn't there, and I think you're going to have tremendous dissension, just like Hillary did. She had tremendous dissension with the Bernie people. You know, a lot of the Bernie people, Trish, voted for me. You saw that. People were shocked. Mm -hmm. I but a lot did. of them, mm -hmm. a lot of them voted for me. Why is that? Because of trade. I think the Bernie people, the one thing that I do uh, have in common with Bernie is trade, because he knows that the world is ripping us off, and I've stopped it, and I'm in the process of stopping it. He could never do what I'm doing now. Now we're negotiating with China, we're negotiating with Japan, we're negotiating with all of these countries that have just ripped off our country for years and years. We lose $68 billion with Japan. We lose $500 billion with China. We do, you know, I put tariffs on China. They're paying us billions and billions of dollars. I know. And they're negotiating. So the question now, that. They're, okay, they're negotiating. And where, where does this go? Do you think you're able to get them to stop stealing our intellectual property? Well, because, you know, I, look, that's, yeah. that's ours. Sure. I mean, look, it's been, it's, it's a very major part of our deal. It's, you know, we Would it's you trade that, deal. I mean, with tariffs? I'll just, I, and I know I got to let you go because you, you got a country to run. Well, I'm, a person, I, I, I'm a person that believes in tariffs <laughs> when somebody's taking advantage. If I wasn't able to use tariffs, I found these really great, very old laws that haven't been used in a long time. Had I not had the power of tariffs, and I can sign them myself, had I not had that power, we wouldn't be having great deals. You're seeing the deals we're making, including South Korea. We made a great deal with South Korea. That was a deal made by Hillary Clinton. It was a horrible deal. She said it's going to produce 250,000 jobs, and it did for South Korea. Not for us, okay, for South Korea. Anyway, we reworked that deal, made it a good deal. But without tariffs, you could have never done it. You could have never done it. So, just a threat, um, because so they, it's, don't want it's, the it, and, and, they don't want the tariffs, okay. and just a threat. So it was, it okay. was great. And you're doing that with sanctions as well, which brings us full circle back to Venezuela tonight, where we're going to continue watching the chaos. And we know, as right. you said, all options, sir, remain on the table. That's true. We have all options are on the table. We'll see. We want to help people. We're not interested in anything else Indeed. other than helping people. Trish, they're dying. They're dying. They're starving. They have no water. They have nothing. It's incredible. If you would have looked 20 years ago, as you said, if you would have looked 25 years ago, this was one of the wealthiest countries, and now they're all dying of starvation and, and uh, things that you wouldn't even believe possible today. I know. I know. Let's uh, all say a prayer for them And it's great that tonight. you're reporting on it. It's great that you're reporting on it, because, frankly, it hasn't been given enough attention, and you're bringing it out, and it's really important that you're doing that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mr. President.